There is a new movie out that I am sure that the farmers in our audience are going to want to see. Most of the movies these days are made for kids age 14 to 24, and rarely is there a movie, an adult movie, geared specifically to the problems of the farmers. That's why I want you to meet this man. Richard Pierce is his name, and he's the director of a new film called Country, which is about your problem. You came in as the director after the production had already started. Right. Richard, how did you establish the authority that's necessary to say, hey, okay, here I am to reorganize it and restructure it? How did you do that? Uh, it's not so complicated. It's just, oh. a, it's just a matter of um, when, you know, either people want a director to take, to, to, to sort of take charge or they don't. And if they do, then, then just being there and being able to answer questions and get the job done means that uh, <laughs> um, you've, uh, you've taken the authority. Uh, I don't think it's something where you have to push people around. Oh. Th there's a, a photographic quality to this film. When you see the farmhouse silhouetted against the sky, silhouetted against the, the landscape, it's almost like it's a still life photography. H how did you do that, Richard? In truth, I, I'm a little suspicious of that. I mean, I think there's, I'm glad to hear you, you, you know, it moved you and you liked the photographs uh, of the farmhouse, but I think uh, in a way, that's the easiest part of making a film is to take pretty pictures of farms and farmhouses, and we've seen plenty of that. The problem with the movie, in a way, and the problem of making a movie about farmers and how they're living today is, is to look inside those pretty pictures and see uh, both what's there and how life is and what it feels like to be a farmer today, and also what's not so easily photographed, what's invisible, what's going on between members of a family in a crisis um, that's invisible that no one can even identify, but it's something that's happening uh, um, to them and all the families around them. Why did you select Waterloo, Iowa as a location? Um, basically because we found a particular farm, uh, oh. which was abandoned, and, uh, and yet we could, we could take it over um, and make it a working farm for the, for, the, for the purposes of our film. Well, I'm thinking in terms of logistics. How do you see daily rushes? How do you get the kind of power and electricity that is really necessary? How do you do that in, in a rural farm in Waterloo, Iowa? With a lot of trucks. <laughs> we had huge numbers of trucks and vehicles, and, and uh, Hollywood is very good at this. Yes, that's why I wonder why, you know, <laughs> Hollywood is very good at doing it out there, but when you have to transport it no, to No, they're a very good. Like no, no, the, the whole movie industry, uh, most movies are now made on location. And uh, whether they're bad movies, good movies, you know, kids' movies, whatever, they, for the most part, are made on locations, unless they're creations of the studio, creations entirely like science fiction movies or cartoons or whatever. So it didn't cause you a problem? No. Well, that, no. That's, I'm glad to no. hear that. That was the least of the problems. No, the problems really are, are, are human problems. Yeah. Um, problems of how uh, a bunch of people who have no real, real, I mean, in, in this case, uh, the, we had an actress who grew up in Minnesota and knew whereof she spoke and mm -hmm. whereof she, um, uh, I mean, she knew the world from which the character came. Um, but you've got 50, 60 some odd people who are coming out from, for the most part, from Los Angeles, and who were plunked down in the middle of uh, a farming community, and, and uh, they've got to assimilate and digest and then, in a sense, mirror through their work uh, mm -hmm. a world that they know very little about. That includes me. Well, did you use real farmers uh, in, in the crowd scenes, for example? Yes. Did you use local? Because there yes. was a quality to them that I thought, those can't be actors, they're too real. They look like our people from Nebraska, I mean, real. Right. Not only were the extras, which is also traditional in a movie, to, to, because it's very expensive to fly out somebody to stand around in the background of a scene. Um, from Hollywood, it's traditional to, to hire peop local people. But this was a case where um, farmers, people who um, had lived what we were portraying, mm -hmm. found their way to us um, and uh, were not only in the background of scenes, but when you see the movie, you, or when your audience sees the movie, you realize that, the, that they were in the foreground and were a very important element mm -hmm. in, the, in the dramatic life of the final scenes of the movie. Richard, one of the things that terrifies us in Nebraska every spring are tornadoes. I mean, we have tornado warnings and we're frightened to right. death. 
He creates a tornado in country. It was very realistic. How, how did you do it? Well, part of it was just that, that uh, in making a decision to have the tornado happen at night, um, we uh, had, the, uh, had the problem and also the, the benefit of the fact that it, when something like that happens at night, you, you, it's, it's almost magical. You can't see it, and yet you can see it. The lightning flashes. There's a sense of the force and power of it, but, but it's, uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's more frightening because you can't see it. And um, like any uh, movie problem, horror movie problem of the monster or the, or the disaster film or whatever, sometimes the, the moments when you can't see the, the monster are more terrifying than the mm -hmm. moments when you can. And the fact that we could, we could um, just define those moments when the lightning flashed and when the wind was at a certain pitch and the combine was thrown in the air, uh, only a certain moments when you could see the full force of the tornado and the shape of it uh, made it, I think, more realistic than if it had been full daylight. Your wife's in the film industry also. Right. Film editor. Right. Uh, Oscar nomination for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Right. Has she seen this? Does she help you at all in any way? Uh, absolutely. We, she sees, oh. the, sees the film at, uh, uh, in a rough cut stage and, and is a fresh eye. Um, and um, I try to use, uh, to, to the sort of save and, uh, and the people who haven't seen a movie are an enormous resource to me, especially people who I know and can trust and are friends. And, and so uh, somebody, somebody who can see a movie freshly and then talk about it is, is, is re real important to the, to the working process of the editing. But if you've already completed something, I mean, would you go back? Would you go back and say, I've got to redo that? Absolutely. It happens all the time. Oh, in this Lord. Film. Not to reshoot it, although that also happens, but to, to uh, reshape it, to repace it, or to, uh, re to re-edit it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> the logistics of that are mind-boggling, of having to redo something. You, you seem to take it so so easily. Well, if it has to be redone, we'll redo it. What about the We end? went to Omaha, Nebraska, to show this film uh, on a preview during the working process and went back and recut it because of the way an audience in Omaha responded to it. So it happens, it's, 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 part, of the, it's part of the sort of secret uh, um, last stages mm -hmm. of a movie when, when the only real arbiter of whether a movie works or not is, is an audience um, out there. Um, that knows nothing about the movie, that fills a theater and says, you know, do it to me. And, 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 you, and you sit there in the audience and you realize whether, you're, whether it's good or bad from mm -hmm. what their responses are. Well, you'll have your opportunity to judge. The movie is country. It's about farmers. It stars Jessica Lange and Sam Shepard and was directed by this gentleman, Richard Pierce. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. You've done Thank a you. terrific film. You should be very proud. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. Tell Eleven Morning continues.